Number 8. Heart Scar Woman Not all bodies are buried in neat and tidy grades, and not all kings and queens get the royal treatment when they die. Such is the case of the Heart Scar Woman whose body was found in what is known as the Gunnels Mouse or Gunhild's Bog on the Haltskar estate in Denmark in 1835. The one-time home of members of noble families of Denmark, the estate might seem like the last place one would expect to find a body. But even after the discovery, the identity of the remains was still up for question. Originally believed to be the Norwegian Queen Gunhild, the body was first discovered under layers of branches by laborers who were excavating peat on the estate. Naked with a leather cape and woolen garments sitting on her abdomen, the woman was examined by forensic biologists who later determined the Iron Age body was found to be around 50 years old at the time of death. She had a wound on her knee where an object is believed to have penetrated quite deeply. Stories surrounding the queen tell a tale of murder and drowning in the bog, with the Danish Harald Bluetooth the culprit for ordering her death. Believing the body to be the Queen's, King Frederick VI of Denmark commissioned an elaborate sarcophagus to hold her body. But as radiocarbon testing was later done on the body, the remains are believed to be of someone else and not the unfortunate Queen. Part of the problem with identification comes from where the body was found. Bog bodies are remarkably preserved, and there isn't any oxygen there to allow organisms to help with the decaying process. As a result, the Hardscar woman not only had her skin intact, her internal organs were still preserved, and her skin had taken on a deeply bronzed coloring, looking like she had only died recently instead of thousands of years ago. Forensic analysis showed that she had ligature marks around her neck, leading researchers to believe she was the unfortunate victim of a ritualistic sacrifice. Genetic markers in her DNA also show that she was likely a member of the Simbri tribe, a group of Iron Age Celtic people who engaged in sacrifices like this. Even after ruling out her ties to royalty, her remains were placed in a glass-covered coffin inside the Church of St. Nikolai in Denmark for the public to view. Today, visitors can pay a visit to this Iron Age woman and see her remarkable yet chilling bronze body for themselves. Number 7. Headless Vikings In 2009, a shocking discovery in the UK brought the history of the Vikings into stark focus. The bodies of 51 young males were found in a thousand-year-old execution pit. Worse, all of the victims were naked and beheaded. They were believed to have lived between AD 910 and 1030, when the English often fought the Viking invaders. The bodies belonged to men ranging from their late teens to their early 20s. Chemical markers in their teeth indicated that they came from all over Scandinavia, with one of the victims hailing from the Arctic Circle. They had deep cut marks to their skull, jaws, and neck. Studies suggest the men were war captives whose heads were savagely cut off. They were found on a hilltop next to an ancient road in a classic example of how British warriors executed their enemies. Researchers believe the raiding party may have left their ship to explore and came upon a well-organized group of Saxons who kept them in prison until they met their unfortunate end. This is in stark contrast to the usual belief that the Vikings were the ones who pillaged, ransacked, and tortured their enemies. Although brutally slain, these 51 young males now identified and whose heads were neatly stacked to the side of the pit have given a glimpse into the savage ways of the past. Number 6. The Secrets of Skeleton Lake The discovery of human remains is startling enough, but when hundreds of human skeletal remains were found in a lake deep in the Himalayas, experts were baffled. Located at Rukbund Lake, almost 17,000 feet above sea level, the bodies were believed to have been from victims of an ancient catastrophic event. Because the area has frequent rock slides, it has been difficult for researchers to study the bodies. Local pilgrims and hikers also frequent the area, and during their visits, they have been known to not only move the skeletons, but to also remove some of the artifacts located with them. Strange folklore of the area describes the mountain as the shrine of the goddess Nanda Devi. When a king and queen made a pilgrimage to the site, the goddess felt their celebratory behavior was inappropriate and struck them down. Other explanations for the bodies include them belonging to an army or group of merchants caught in a vicious storm, while another says they were the victims of an epidemic. After gaining access, scientists were able to study 38 of the skeletons and found that 23 are believed to have come from South Asia and 14 were from the Mediterranean. Radiocarbon dating found the remains are each from very different eras, with the South Asians from around 800 BC and the others dated around 1800 BC, refuting the catastrophic event theory as their origin. 
Either way, the area and its gruesome discovery still seem to have secrets that need to be uncovered. Would you hike at a place known to have skeletal remains? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, hit that thumbs up, and if you're a bored badger like me, click on the subscribe button too. Number 5. Tree Skeleton When a large beech tree fell during a storm in Ireland in 2015, no one expected the grisly discovery of a skeleton tangled in its roots. The macabre site was not only a surprise, but its ties to the ancient past made the find that much more shocking. After bringing in a team of experts to excavate and analyze the remains, the Irish National Monument Service found the unfortunate victim trapped in the roots of the 215-year-old tree died a violent death. With stab wounds in the upper chest and in the left hand, researchers could see the victim trying to defend himself against the brutal attack. Aged between 17 and 20 years old, the remains are believed to be between 900 and 1,000 years old. Whether he died as a result of a battle or a personal dispute is difficult to tell, but it's obvious proper care was taken to provide a Christian burial for the victim with his head pointing towards the west. Historical records show there was at one time a church and a graveyard in the area, but with neither visible today, it is believed that whoever planted the tree had no idea there were human remains beneath it. Purely coincidental, if not for the storm, this unknown young man may never have been unearthed. Number 4. Cannibal Neanderthals If you thought life as a Neanderthal only meant worrying about where your next meal might come from, then think again. Evidence of cannibalism on the remains of a Neanderthal family found in Spain were definitely unexpected. Of the 12 individuals found by explorers, all were said to have had signs on their bones that another Neanderthal group came along and dined on their remains. Located in a cave in Spain, the family is believed to have died 49,000 years ago, shortly before a violent storm that caused the cave to collapse on their bodies. The remains at the El Cedron site, which included three adult males, three adult females, three male adolescents, two juveniles, and an infant, were unearthed over a period of 10 years. The remains were difficult to locate and highly fragmented. They found teeth, mandibles, long bones, and skull fragments. Using mitochondrial DNA, Researchers found the adult males were all related. Many different markings were found on the bones to indicate cannibalism, including cut marks and snap bones to extract the marrow. Although cannibalism is not rare among Neanderthals, seeing all 12 individuals with the telltale signs is shocking. Other European sites where the remains of Neanderthals have been found also had similar findings, with some of the teeth found showing evidence of periods of starvation. Although some scientists point to harsh winters as one of the reasons Neanderthals may have felt desperate to find food, the thought that they may have looked at their fellow Neanderthals as a meal is nightmarish at best. Number 3. The Screaming Mummy Egyptian mummies are always fascinating, but one mummified woman made waves due to the terrifying expression on her face when she was discovered. She was found more than a century ago in 1881, and she was named Meritamum. She was located in a tomb complex on the opposite side of the Nile from the ancient city of Luxor. Although there have been several princesses with the same name, archaeologists are not sure she was one of these royal daughters. And even though you might think that her chilling pose with her mouth propped open in a silent scream is terrifying, there was another mummy found at the same location with the same grisly expression. As researchers set out to determine her identity, they found that even though she was mummified well, and many of her organs removed, and her abdomen packed with resin and linen, unlike most mummifications, her brain had not been removed. But the most telling thing found in the examination was the fact that she had the signs of blockages in her blood vessels, which could have caused a heart attack that took her life. But why was she in such a strange state? Why was her mouth hanging open and her legs bent and crossed at the ankles? Researchers believe she died alone and was not found until rigor mortis had already set in, which meant the embalmers could not secure her jaw properly. Even though, quote, screaming mummies have indeed been found around the world, including ones in Peru, Mexico, and Sicily, Maritaman could possibly look that way because her wrappings were simply not tight enough to hold her mouth closed. There are no records of how the Egyptians exactly went about the mummification process. The secrets of their process remain much of a mystery. As for Maritaman, the fact that her brain was not removed led researchers to believe that she was mummified in the 17th century, which points to her identity as that of the daughter of Sekenra Ta'as II, not Ramses the Great, as some first believed. Number 2. Victims of Chemical Warfare In the 1920s and 30s, a French archaeologist excavated siege tunnels in the Syrian city of Dora, where Roman soldiers had gathered to defend. 
But as an army of Persians dug to undermine the city's mud brick walls, the Romans, thinking they were one upping their enemy, were met with a noxious cloud of black smoke that turned to acid in their lungs, killing them all. The attack is believed to have killed the men in 256 AD and is thought to be the first instance of chemical warfare. Although the Romans thought that they were being crafty by building these siege tunnels in an effort to cut off the Persians, who were tunneling underneath the walls of the Roman military bases, the Roman defenders ended up being choked out when the Persians set fire to the tunnels. Traces of sulfur and bitumen found in the tunnel suggest the fire came fast and hot, and the Romans never had the chance to escape. Later found stacked in a pile, the Romans fell victim to their own pride, believing that they had the advantage over the Persians, but as the tunnel cleared of its smoke, the Persians are believed to have piled the bodies together before they collapsed the tunnel on top of them, leaving the Romans with their coins, arms, and weapons untouched. It was a brutal find to say the least. After archaeologists finished their work excavating and examining the ancient bones, they later filled in the tunnels, leaving the skeletons where they were found, so further examination and the final report on whether chemical warfare was the cause of the Roman soldier deaths is still something of a theory. Number 1. Massive Tumor The skeleton of an unfortunate 17th century woman was discovered in the 1960s with a massive growth the size of a basketball on her lower jaw. Located about 30 miles from Charleston, the land once housed the settlement of Shawnee people. When a shallow grave of more than 500 skeletons was found by the West Virginia Geological and Economic Survey, researchers were understandably floored. But one particular skeleton caught their eye. A woman in her early 20s was located with a 10 by 10 inch sized tumor on her jaw. Most commonly identified as bone cancer in teenagers and young adults, the rare bone tumor was analyzed, with researchers believing it would have been growing for many months, if not years. Weighing in at about 5 pounds, the tumor did not seem to have impacted her ability to eat. She was buried among the others of her tribe, and she didn't seem to have been treated any differently, even though the rare growth, normally found on the spine and not the jaw, would have most definitely been visible to those she lived with. Buried in shallow graves under the floors of their houses, the skeletons are now housed in the West Virginia Archaeological Society in Moundville. By looking at their ancient pathology, the stories of these skeletons and the tribe they belong to are no longer lost to history. They're now a place that honors their lives. Thanks for watching. What do you think of these bizarre skeletons discovered? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on the Board Badger.